Hello friends and welcome back to edupediaworld.com. In this session, we will be continuing with market structure and pricing decisions. Now, what is a market structure? To understand this, first let's see that what is a market. Market is any structure that allows buyers and sellers to exchange any types of goods, services and information. So we see here that it is a set of buyers and sellers and obviously commodity. Buyers are willing to buy here and sellers are willing to sell and there is a price of a commodity depending upon the number of sellers and number of buyers. Now basically the number of sellers which actually makes the degree of competition that is the degree of competition in the market and the type of product they are selling makes different types of market structure. So here we can see that there are different types of market structure. The whole market structure is divided into two types of market that is uh, one is where there is perfect competition the, and the other is where there is imperfect competition. We can see the characteristics also of the different types of market structure. In the first column it is about the market structure. The second column tells us about the number of firms and degree of product differentiation that is whether a product is perfect substitute for one another or not. That also defines the uh, different types of market. Next is the nature of industry, like in what type of industry we find what type of market structure. Then what is the control of uh, over the price in different types of market structure and then the method of marketing. So we see here the first is the perfect competition. In perfect competition, the major characteristic is that La there are large number of firms with homogeneous products. Now what does homogeneous products mean? It means that the one product is perfect substitute of other and the buyers are not able to differentiate between two particular commodities. Next, the nature of industry like in these type of industries we basically find the perfect competition that is financial markets, stock exchange, then farm products, for example, vegetable market, fruit market, we find perfect competition. Then the because there are large number of buyers and large number of sellers, so there is no control over the price of the commodity. The price is solely determined by the demand and supply of the product in the market. Next is the method of marketing under perfect competition is markets exchange or auction that is what the basic method of marketing is the method of marketing under perfect competition now the next category is the imperfect competition we find three types of market structure in imperfect competition first one is the monopolistic market and the characteristic of monopolistic market is that there are although many firms but they are with differentiated products in the market that is with the branding with the packaging with the content of the product they differentiate the product some uh, what or the other with the products of different other firms in the industry the nature of the industry is that uh, like you find monopolistic competition in industries dealing with products like tea, toothpaste, TV sets, shoes, refrigerators, etc. And because the product are differentiated in nature, there is some control over the pricing of the commodity. The method of marketing here is competitive and they use advertising in order to uh, increase the sale of their product there is quality also and there is tough competition because they are selling differentiated product and they want to capture the maximum share in the market next type of market structure under imperfect competition is oligopoly under oligopoly there is little or no product differentiation for example your petroleum industry and uh, we find this type of market structure for products such as aluminium, steel, cigarettes, cars, passenger cars, etc. And the control over price is some. 
that is the suppliers together have some control over the price they can decide upon the price then the method of marketing here is competitive and advertisements are used in order to increase the sale of the product they also focus on the quality of the product in order to increase their market share and obviously there is some competition in the market the last market is structure under imperfect competition is monopoly and we see here that there is a single producer without any close substitute so when there is just single seller and many buyers it is a monopoly market situation we see this type of um, uh, characteristic under products such as uh, products which uh, provide public utilities such as telephone electricity etc so we perfect competition we see monopoly under this type of market next is the control over price is considerable but usually regulated that is the seller because he the the seller is only one in the market so he or she has a good regulation over the price of the commodity the method of marketing under monopoly is promotional advertising if supply is large the last uh, structure under imperfect competition is monopoly and we see here that there is only one single seller and the product which he is selling in the market has no close substitute in the market now we see such type of uh, situation in products of public utilities for example telephone electricity etc and there is a very good control over the price because there is only one seller in the market so he has considerable but it is always and usually regulated and the method of marketing here is he goes for promotional advertising in those cases where the supply of the product is large so these are the types of market structures and we differentiate between the various market structure according to the degree of competition now let's see what do we mean by degree of competition now the degree of competition basically tells about that how much firm has control over the price of the commodity it de depending upon the control of the firm over the price of the commodity it varies from 0 to 1 that is 0 refers to that the firm has full control over the price of the commodity and 1 refers to that the firm has no control on the price of the commodity so now we'll be classifying various market structures depending upon the degree of competition let's start with perfect competition under perfect competition because there are large number of buyers and large number of sellers and the sellers are selling homogeneous product so they don't have any control on the price of the commodity so the degree of competition under perfect competition is 1 that is close to 1 that is they have they don't have any control on the price of the commodity the next type of market is monopolistic competition now under monopolistic competition although there are large number of buyers and large number of sellers but the sellers are selling differentiated products now what does differentiated means it means that the product of one firm dif is differentiated from the product of another firm due to the branding due to the packaging due to the content of the product so they sell differentiated product so here the degree of competition is less than 1 that is under monopolistic competition firms have some control on the price of the commodity next one is under oligopoly market now see here although there are large number of sellers but they form a type of group or cartel in order to fix the price of the commodity so the sellers uh, here have a lot of control on the price of the product and so here it is again ranging from 0 to 1 not full control but still they have some control on the 
price of the product because all the sellers form a cartel type of or collision type of thing in order to decide upon the price of the commodity and here the control that is the degree of competition is less as compared to the monopolistic competition and last but not the least is monopoly now under monopoly because there is one single seller so we can say that the degree of competition here is close to zero that is the seller has almost full control on the price of the commodity he can decide any price of the commodity and on that price only the buyer has to buy the product now we come to price and output determination in various types of market starting with price determination under perfect competition now as revising upon perfect competition is a situation where there are large number of buyers and large number of sellers selling homogeneous product let's see some of the basic characteristics of perfect competition first one is large number of buy sellers and large number of buyers so neither the buyer nor the seller can influence the price of the commodity next is homogeneous products now homogeneous here means that the product are perfect substitute to one another and the buyer it does not matters to the buyer from which seller he is buying the product the next is perfect mobility of factors of production under perfect competition the inputs have perfect mobility that is they can leave the industry they can join a industry they can leave a firm without any regulations next is free entry and exit of firms under perfect competition in the long run the firm can enter a particular industry where they are seeing that there is a lot of profit they can exit a particular industry where they see that they are making losses so there is free entry and exit without any regulation next characteristic is perfect knowledge that is the buyers and sellers are fully aware of what is happening in the market and what are the prices of the product in the market next characteristic is uh, there is absence of collision or artificial restraint now collision here refers to a type of group a type of union formed by sellers and buyers in order to go against the prices for example sellers can form their union in order to fix up the price of the commodity but this is not possible under perfect competition similarly buyers can uh, form consumers association or consumer forum in order to go against the prices fixed up by the sellers so this is also not possible under perfect competition and they cannot make any artificial restraint for example they cannot go for holding of prices in or by restricting the supply of the commodity so this is not possible under perfect competition the market moves very smoothly under perfect competition next is there is no government intervention intervention that is the government cannot fix up the lower or upper limit of prices they can not control over the supply of inputs they cannot fix any type of quota on the production so there is no government intervention and the prices are determined smoothly just by the demand and supply forces of the market so these are the characteristics of perfect competition now depending upon the different types of time period we will be studying about that how price and output is determined under different types of time period under perfect competition the first one is price determination under market period now you must be wondering that what is market period we have uh, studied about short run we have studied about long run we have studied about very long run but what is market period basically market period refers to very short run see here a time frame is considered where the supply of the product is inelastic that is fixed so market period refers to very short run and it refers to a time period during which quantity supplied is absolutely fixed or 
we can say in other words that the supply response to price is nil so here under this the price is determined depending upon the demand of the product we can see here suppose we take the example of marriage halls the supply of marriage halls during a particular time period the supply of marriage halls for a particular time period is fixed we show it on a graph on x axis we take the quantity supplied and here we are taking the example of uh, marriage halls and on y axis we are taking the price in dollars see as i told you that the supply of the marriage halls in a particular time period for a very short run is fixed that is it cannot be increased or decreased so we get a supply curve which is parallel to the y axis now how we'll determine the price here it will totally depend upon the demand when the demand of the product of uh, the marriage halls is low the price will be low when the demand rises because the supply is fixed the price will rise up suppose we get a curve dd this is the demand and it cuts the supply at this point so here the price is determined this is suppose p1 and this is quantity supplied which is fixed so here the price is determined that is when the supply curve is fixed supply is fixed then demand of the commodity demand of the marriage halls in a particular time period determines the prices now suppose there is there are various auspicious dates and there is season where people more there is more of demand and of the marriage halls so the demand increases to curve d dash t dash which thereby increases the price of the halls that is the rental charged of the halls it increases the price of the halls so this is uh, we see that how price is determined under very short run where the supply of the commodity the supply of the particular uh, product is fixed now this is uh, this is a situation under market period which is called demand derived prices now likewise we can also have supply determined prices now suppose the this is the original supply curve of a commodity i am again talking about the market period that is very short run this is the original supply curve of a commodity due to some or the other, other reason uh, the supply of the commodity falls suppose there is increase in the export of that particular commodity or there is flood drought due to which that particular agriculture product is not being supplied up to the supply curve ss so the supply curve shifts towards its left that is s dash s dash now this is the demand of the demand curve this is the demand of the commodity so we see here when the supply of that particular commodity decreases in a very short run the price increases because the quantity supplied is less as compared to the demand of the product so the price increases the price rises to p1 whereas when the supply curve was ss the price was p0 that is less price was charged for the same commodity because there was more of supply in the market so this particular situation we call it supply determined prices 
so this is what happens in very short run we can see here that there are two types of situations uh, through which price can be determined that is demand de determined prices and supply determined prices this was about market period that is very short run next we'll be studying about short run price determination under short run now here we define the short run as a time period in which firms can neither change their scale of production or quit nor can new firms enter the industry but we can change or that is increase or decrease the quantity supplied of a particular product by increasing or decreasing the variable inputs used in the production process so here the price is determined by the industry and the firm basically has to adjust its output according to the price determined by the industry so that it earns profit in the short run we'll see how it is done so as in the short run because the firm have no control on the prices they just need to determine the output so that they earn some amount of profit let's see how it is done this is the supply curve and this is the demand curve this is supply curve ss and this is the demand curve dd and the demand curve cuts the supply curve at point e this is the equilibrium point and here the price is determined and this is the total quantity which is supplied by all the firms in the industry this graph shows the graph of a uh, industry the demand and supply of the product of a particular industry this is how the price is determined by the market demand and supply equilibrium now as i told you that the firm has no control on the price so they have to accept the price which is determined by the demand and supply of the product in the industry so i will extend this curve to the firm as i can see that here the oq is the sorry op is the price which is to be accepted by the firm so op is my average revenue so this curve i can say it as average revenue and because average revenue is always equals to the marginal revenue so this particular curve shows me that this is the price which is equal to the average revenue which is equal to the marginal revenue now let's see how the firm determines the output to be produced this is the marginal cost curve and the marginal cost curve cuts the average revenue or the marginal revenue curve at point e at this point so at this particular point the output is determined this is the quantity to be produced by the firm in order to be at this particular price this is the marginal cost curve of the firm and it cuts the marginal revenue curve at point e so this particular point shows us that here the marginal cost is equals to marginal revenue we say that marginal where the marginal cost is equals to marginal revenue that particular point is the profit maximizing output now why do we say this let's see if you remember that profit is always equal to total revenue minus total cost and if you remember the cost curve somewhat looks like this this is the total cost curve now what about the total revenue we determine the total revenue which is equals to price into the quantity produced now let me assume for a moment that the price of a particular commodity is suppose dollar 5 
and let's see that what is the total revenue generated as we increase upon the quantity of the product this is the quantity this is the price and what is the total revenue so when the quantity produced was zero price was dollar five total revenue would be zero when the quantity produced is one price again is dollar five then total revenue would be dollar five when the quantity produced was two price is dollar again five the total revenue would be dollar ten that is price into quantity likewise the price of the commodity increases as regards to the quantity increased and it is always a linear relation that is it constantly increases so under perfect competition the total revenue curve will be a straight line which is continuously increasing this is the total revenue curve so we have got the total cost curve we have got the total revenue curve so what about my profit how will i determine that what is my profit and what is the maximum level of profit let's see we should not forget that profit is a combination of total revenue and total cost this is my total cost curve and this is my total revenue curve this is total cost and this is total revenue curve suppose i get two quantity produced this is q and this is q dash on x axis i take my quantity and on y axis i take my total cost and total revenue so we can see here that at q my total cost is equals to total revenue and at q dash also my total cost is equals to total revenue and this particular portion that is if i have to determine that what is my level of losses and what is my level of profit we can see here that up till point from o to oq this portion shows that my total cost is more than the total revenue so this is the losses which i am getting am i getting further losses yes if i see that the portion beyond the quantity q dash that is this particular portion again my total cost curve is more than the total revenue curve so this particular portion also shows the losses but the portion between the quantity q to q dash this particular portion because my total revenue is more than the total cost so this particular portion shows me the amount of profit so now i get that how the profit will look like let's see how now i will determine the profit maximizing output from the last graph we have continued that how the profit look likes it will look like this i can say that that this is this particular point is the highest profit level and this particular quantity at this particular quantity i get the this is the profit maximizing output so how do i determine this particular point it is basically determined we call it as this and this is this particular level is always equal to change in total revenue minus change in total cost divided by 
change in quantity which is always equal to zero that is here my marginal cost and marginal revenue will always be equal to zero if i break this down i will get the equation like this change in total revenue minus change in total cost is always divided by change in quantity is always equal to zero and further breaking it down change in total revenue upon change in quantity minus change in total cost upon change in quantity is always greater than zero then we can say this that is change in total revenue upon change in quantity is my marginal revenue likewise change in total cost upon change in quantity is my marginal cost which is always equal to zero so concluding i can always say that marginal revenue is equals to my marginal cost so we get here that the highest level of profit is a point where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost now suppose think about a situation where marginal revenue is not equal to marginal cost what will happen at this particular point suppose marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost that is this particular portion here marginal revenue up till this portion that is up till point if we term it as q dash to q this particular portion is a portion showing margin where my marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost this means that more is added to revenue than to cost and we can continue increase the profit by adding more to the output until we reach the point q so we can increase upon the profit by increasing more number of output produced and suppose uh, go for different situation that is marginal revenue is less than marginal cost that is i am talking about this particular point this point suppose this is q double dash so up till this point my marginal cost is always uh, more than the marginal revenue so now this portion means that there is more addition to the cost as a result of producing more output as compared to the contribution to the marginal revenue now remember here that this portion does not shows us negative profit it basically shows us that the profits are declining because we are increasing on the output and the cost is increasing more than the increase in the revenue so again i have to decline down my production in order to reach to a level of q so that i can reach to my maximum profit level so we see here that the maximum profit level is a point where marginal revenue is always equal to marginal cost now let's come back to the output determination under perfect competition we see here that the quantity has been determined that the output level has been determined at a point where marginal cost is equals to marginal revenue that is where the marginal cost curve is cutting at the marginal revenue curve now is the firm earning profits or losses it the average cost curve will determine that suppose this is my average cost curve now the average cost curve cuts this particular curve that is pq at this point suppose we name it as m so we can see here that the average cost is below the average revenue curve that is average revenue at this particular point the average revenue is more than the average cost so obviously the firm is earning profits and this is the level of profit the firm is making this is the quantity which has been determined the firm has determined the price is fixed the firm only needs to determine the quantity and that is determined at a point where the marginal curve 
cuts marginal cost curve cuts the marginal revenue curve and how to see that whether the firm is making profit or losses it is seen by the level of average cost if the average cost curve is below the average revenue curve the firm is making profit but if the average cost curve is above the average revenue curve the firm is making losses so this is how pr price and output is determined under short run so concluding we say that in a perfectly competitive market in a short run the firm can earn economic profit as as been seen by this particular graph as well as it can run into losses also once market price for the product is determined it is given for all the firms as we see here that the market price has been determined and the firm has to follow this particular market price only now the only option here under short run for a firm is to produce as much as it can sell at the given particular price so that it does not run into losses so this was about short run price determination in the next session we will be studying that how price and output is determined under long run under perfect competition Till then have a nice time and thank you for watching Edupedia World